So last time I was showing how you, how I basically wired up everything with the MPPT charge controller here to power up the Nerd X and Nerd Miner. And now I do have this sort of circuit box thingy here that I want to use. I already do have a cutout here in the bottom for the cables to come in. Uh, next thing that I need to do is to cut a hole to the left and to the right in order to get this uh, some sort of an opening and put a fan here and there. And then I can actually close this one off, put it outside, and then everything should be in here. And to get everything in there, I do have this plate here. And you see, I already have this rail. And for this rail, I have this bit X holder here. Uh, the link to this will be in the video description down below. This is uh, developed by Printer Group Brewer, or whatever you're gonna pronounce his name. Uh, I just call them printer go and uh, yeah you can put it on these standard Dean rails and then I'll need to apply it on here and uh, on the bottom section there will be the battery probably a little bit upstanding uh, somewhere here I need to put the MPPT charge controller and then one or two bit eggs on top and then everything will go into this box there which uh, should be nice but yeah, let's see. Let's see if I can do a little bit of work on that. Alrighty, so this is that. Let me quickly get through here. Maybe I can change the camera a little bit. One second. Alright. So this is that. I want to put everything in this in this box. And, uh, it's a little bit messy. I'm, I'm moving in the next couple of months, so uh, things are messy, messy in here, whatever. All right, uh, so we do have this box here right now. And as you see, uh, up on top here, I'll probably put in these bit eggs. I can even fit two of them in there. And then I do have the battery, which will probably go in here on the side. And uh, then I can wire everything up. And uh, I need to figure out how I can screw this MPPT charge controller uh, really really tight in here. I need to find the correct screws for that. But that shouldn't be an issue. So yeah, let me find a couple of screws and then I'll record me a little bit doing here some, some work, yeah? So that we can finally get this thing outside instead of me having all day long uh, the window here open, which I don't want to do. It's, it's not literally. So alrighty, uh, I got my charge controller screwed up to this. Uh, first I was thinking of going over to the hardware store and getting myself the proper uh, screws and nuts, but guess what, I'm, I'm a little bit lazy <laughs> and I found these laying around. Uh, these screws are way too long, so what I did is I put a nut here and a nut on the other side. Uh, let me see, can you focus that, there we go. Uh, so we do have now a nut on the back side and one at the front and I don't have enough so I only screwed in the top ones but this should be enough as you can see I can wiggle it around, should work. So now the next step what I will do is I will use uh, this thin holder and, and put it in here. Uh, so I need to figure out like two screw holes. Uh, probably somewhere here so this should work and after that I'm gonna put on a bit X here and then I do a little bit of wiring and when we get to the wiring I do have a couple of additional informations for you that I do think are important especially that uh, I do use this with home assistant so I'm, I'm getting into home assistant more and more and thanks again to crypto eyes for getting me into home assistant it's really lovely you need to get used to it and you need to tinker a little bit to be honest to get everything um, but I'll definitely also make a video on how you can actually read out all the things of this MPT touch controller there is a lovely github repository especially for this using ESP home with home assistant uh, but I will obviously show you how to do that super simple and uh, yeah let me let me put in some some screw holes here all right so they fit in perfect. Let me put in the second screw. Uh, yeah, so one of the biggest issues that I do have now is uh, 
obviously have the BDX holder here, but I do have this buck converter. Let me grab it quickly. So this one right here, this buck converter. And obviously I need to put it somewhere, probably here. Uh, but I'm not sure how to do that. Maybe I grab myself some brass standoffs and put it on here like that. That's probably the best idea. So yeah, I'll probably need to do that. I was thinking about maybe putting this onto these rails as well. But to be honest with you guys, I don't, I don't I'm not really into uh, 3D designing. I, I tried it a couple of times, some things are working. I'm more on the easy side. Advanced stuff, no, nah, no way. Like with this uh, holder, it's, it may, I don't know if it is advanced or not, but uh, I, I love if other people can do it and if I can pay them for that. <laughs> yeah, so let me quickly, yeah, let me, let me quickly drew a couple of holes, uh, drill through this metal sheet and then I will try my best to get it in here with some brass standoffs. And now it fits in. Uh, let me let me show that to you. Uh, here we go. So now I do have breast and offs, and uh, yeah, my my holes are kind of working. It's okay. So now I need to put in on the back side a counterpart to to screw it in place. And now I should be ready to go. Because everything else will just be just plugging it in, firing it up, and then it should work. And I will put it outside. But uh, I mean, so far it looks beautiful. But let me put it in here. Let's see if everything works the way it is intended to. Great. Let me see. I can show you that a little bit better. I'm sorry for the camera movement today, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to do this on the bottom here or. On, on the floor so bear with me cable management will be ugly everything else will be ugly but we'll get there we'll get there trust me already uh, so now for testing purposes I wired everything up as you can see I do have the cable from the output coming to the back converter here and then from the back converter and output over to these cl uh, climp thingies and then right into the nerd eggs that I do have there and now I want to fire it up. I got the battery with me, and uh, just to show you what kind of battery I do have. So we have a 12 volts, uh, 7 amp roughly. Yeah, just a small fable battery. And let me put it in here because I'm not really sure how I want to put it in there. Um, I still need to figure that one out. All right, probably I need to screw in terminal aside first. Let me quickly do so. Alrighty, uh, let's switch over here so that you can see that a little bit better. And now I can quickly go into my app and uh, yeah, I still need to place the battery inside. But let me quickly go inside my app and let's see if we can fire this one up. Alrighty, from the output side, looks good, it's firing up. Uh, need to figure out a couple of things. So now uh, we do have the battery there. Charge controller, back converter, and the node X. And it is mining. As you can see. Lovely. So now I need to get this outside and remove all the cable shit that I do have laying around here upstairs. But uh, I'll figure this out in a second. Alrighty, so now this mess is here. Uh, these two cables are coming in here. I need to wire them up. And then if you follow the cable, it goes straight to the solar panel. And let me quickly fire it up. And then let me see if we can get some information in the Victron app. Alrighty, so sun is hitting it. And if we do take a look here, it is charging actually, which is nice. So now I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna switch over to the Victron app. Uh, let's see if everything works ex as expected and by the way yeah i know currently i don't have any van uh, fan holes in there i need to fix that for now we'll just sit there with uh, the lid open i hope it shouldn't rain in there and 
if that's working, and I assume it will work as expected, then I will leave it out here. And as soon as I do have the fans and especially the uh, 3D printed shrouds for the right and left hand side, then I'm going to do an update video about that, how to do that. Should be fairly simple. All right, apparently my phone was not recording my voice, but here we are in the Victron app. Let's quickly connect to the Victron device fetching data quickly and we can right away see that we do see the voltage of the solar panel the battery is fully charged let's quickly go to the load output and switch the con to the convention algorithm uh it takes up to two minutes so yeah let's quickly switch over to always on and let's go back here because we want to figure it out it seems like it no it's not powering on uh all right one one second i'm i'm gonna fix something Alrighty, here we can see it now. Now it's on. It took about two minutes to actually go to this convection algorithm, whatever. And you can see that it is sitting at one amp of the load output. So 14 watts roughly. Yeah, that's beautiful. Solar is also hitting in. So we're doing a good job. We're recharging the battery and we are running the BitX device or the NerdX in this case, which is just lovely. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically it for today's video. I thank everybody of you for joining in here, for viewing it. If you do enjoy today's content, please give me a like and comment down below so that I do know that you love the content. Until then, yeah, well, thanks for watching and I'll update you anytime soon about this solar project. Peace out.